100, and once they performed an action, the stat associated with the action, so like uh, making a sandwich, which would probably be a cooking stat, for example, that stat would be checked against the die. If your cooking stat was 50, then you'd need to get 50 or lower on the die to succeed. Stats can increase with play, and as they get higher, the odds that the player rolls a dice and gets a lower number gets higher as well. Voila, that's how they simulated probability. But running alongside those stats was a sanity counter, which would decrease as the player encountered the game's horrors. Because of that, the games often ended with players going mad and being horribly butchered or going into asylums or something. And that was the big difference between Call of Cthulhu and other RPGs. Call of Cthulhu did not expect the player character to make it through in one piece. And that's impressive if you ask me. A very good adaptation of Lovecraftian horror, one which naturally produces plot progressions reminiscent of Lovecraft's writings. And the way narrative worked in those games was with onion skins, that is, interlocking layers of information are used to keep the players nested in a certain point in the narrative, and as the player solves the clues left for them in the world, or advances some quest lines, those layers unlock. This way, a missing persons case can escalate into the player entering deep cyclopean labyrinths under Brooklyn, where an apocalyptic cult has their rituals. What does this have to do with the changes made to the world of Bloodborne? A lot. Because Bloodborne originally worked a lot like this. Instead of exclusively unlocking more areas, they would also unlock more of the same areas, and would see the world as it really was. Now functionally this is still sort of the case, but since the levels aren't as adaptable to players as they would have been in the pre-caveman setup, the effect of this is minimized. Bloodborne's inside mechanic is internally, uh, in notes, referred to as San for sanity, but it's not as impressive in terms of delivering Lovecraftian narratives as the sanity mechanic in the Call of Cthulhu role-playing games was. But to be fair, that's not exactly its purpose in the current build of the game. There are some things locked behind the player having enough insight, but it's very inconsequential 